Hey guys, and welcome back to some more Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. We will see how well I will put up with this trial because I just woke up and I'm feeling rather tired and funny. So, hopefully there aren't too many errors and things with my reading, but we'll find out. Got a new guy in the courtroom. The court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. I don't know. I don't know what voice I'm gonna do for him yet. We'll figure it out. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. It's time for us to see who this Edgeworth is and what exactly he can do. I mean, he's a lawyer, a prosecuting genius at the age of 20. So it's gonna be interesting to see what this prodigy can do. Okay. Anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. You may call your first witness. The prosecution calls the chief op- wait, was I messed up again? Uh, whatever. Prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Yay, this dopey guy again. Sorry. Gotta have the Mountain Dew up break. Before things get really going. Alright. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir! My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. Sir. The body was found by this window here. Kind of looked like a bottle for a second. Okay, I get it, because she slumped against the wall. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue's evidence. I already had that, right? Okay. They're still calling it a statue. Floor plans are added. Okay. Now, detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. My phase arrest. Okay. First testimony of the trial. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Okay. Hmm, the very moment, you say? Very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Yeah, I couldn't either. Whoosh! <laughs> Smack! <laughs> hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. This is all they do. These two Faye sisters just... basically do his shit for him or tell him what to do in order to get through these. But, you know, whatever works. He is still new and wet behind the ears. So, you gotta expect a little bit of cluenesses, I guess. But becoming a lawyer is really hard. <laughs> Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination, now that I know what to do. Shoo! Intense. Let's go. Alright, I'm gonna rush to the scene. Let's do some stuff that seems... I don't want to do everything. Whatever. There. Let's press this. Hold on just one second. Yeah? If I heard correctly, 
You said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did... Did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. <laughs> exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? Other than your wiener. What? Miss May isn't suspicious. And she sure isn't pink, pal. Yeah, she is. Well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um... Hmm. I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Good. Okay, hard evidence. Finally, we get to it. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was clearly wi written in blood. I said that wrong. Lab test results showed that the blood was from was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Oh, oh, crazy. Uh, let's get your feedback, government, general public. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Uh, it was great. Thank you. Dick. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, detective. Your honor? Why didn't you testify on this final piece of information <laughs> the first time? No kidding. Ah, I know. I'm real embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. There's not that much there at the crime scene. How did you forget about that? Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Here we go! Alright, I already know this one. We don't have to press stuff for it, so that's good. Let's see. Uh, green and blood. Uh... She died. The victim wrote the killer's name. Okay, so we know. If we look at Mia's autopsy report, death was instantaneous, so she couldn't have done that. And... Objection! Objection! Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Faye, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Faye? That's really what you're saying? What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? No. You have it backwards, detective. Backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Sorry. The antivirus thing was starting to run on my computer. Okay, anyway. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately! But... No butting your way out of this one, detective! <laughs> He's always got the zingers. I love it. Yeah, they, they liked it too. They liked it too. Order! Order! The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have the time to write anything down. Yeah, thank you very much. Ooh! He's butting in. Mr. Wright. I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain the autopsy report? When? The day after the murder, right? The day of, right? Yeah. I am pretty sure it was the day of the murder. You're wrong there. Oh, it was the day after. Stupid. You're wrong there, pal. We didn't write an autopsy report till the day after. Oh, right. <laughs> the prosecution's point being. Ooh. That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. That, that's convenient. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor. It's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. Take a bow, that is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Damn you! Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham. The detective- I'm a sham! 
I shouldn't be a lawyer. Let's just blame him. Detective Gumshoe, you're a sham. How could you give me a faulty report? Huh? I, I thought... Detective Gumshoe. Er, I'm disappointed in you handing him the wrong report like that. Oh, you did that on purpose. Huh? I... I'm sorry, sir. You are at fault, detective. <laughs> this isn't going to look good on your evaluation next month. What? But... Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. Alright, we updated it. Now it was almost immediate. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Stop bowing! Darn, this isn't good! Darn was the word I would have used for this guy, but you guys know. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Ah! Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Oh, here we go. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Oh, jeez. Witness, your name, please. April May, at your service. Oh, God. Oh, they're excited. This isn't going well already. Order! An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton thinking. Winking, sorry. Aw, yes, Your Honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in the court. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Gee, I was, like, in my hotel room. Tee -hee. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fang Co. Law Offices. Mmm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Alright. It begins. It was, like, night at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Oy, I hate you so much. Hmm. Well, your honor... I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see you need to trouble the witness any- Wait, Your Honor! Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? Yeah, I need a chance. At least, please. I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite- Firm! <laughs> didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss My- Mia Faye's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey! How dare you! You're talking about the dead chick. Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Uh, hell yeah, I'm doing it. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Here we go. Cross-examine, go! Alright, night at night, that seems right. Ew! Okay. Hmm, that's it? Nothing really jumps out as a contradiction. There's gotta be something in there somewhere. Maybe I'd better just press her on the facts a bit. Okay. We'll do that. Um... She dodged? Dodge what? Well, the attack! Please, continue your testimony. Oh, that wasn't anything. All right. She caught up to her and she hit her. Let's try that. How did you know it was my client? Huh? Well, I... Gee! First of all, she had a girl's physique. And... And secondly, she was... She was small! Who else could it be but her? She has a point. 
I'm not gonna agree with her. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. <laughs> what? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. Uh, you didn't see anything. Did you really see the defendant at all? Eep. Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless. About this, I mean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you had really witnessed my client, Maya Fay, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. Eep. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. True, I didn't think about that. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus! But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Rawr! What are you trying to say, mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. <laughs> your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. Well, it's not gonna be that easy, apparently. Alright, that's just gonna fix it. I did see everything! I did! The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon! I saw it! I did! That... that clock! Um, the kind of statue clock? The thinker, I think? Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Tee! Whoa. My voice. There we go. Ah, I see. I only wish you'd been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. Okay. Now, she mentioned the clock, I think, but they don't know it's a clock. Or well, they're not supposed to know it's a clock. Right? She just kind of have hippie clothes. I like it. Uh, let's see if we can do this. Let's see. Um, uh, let's try it. Objection! Yes. There's a small indication if you're not sure if you got something right. If the music stops when you s present, then that means you got it. I had to know these things because I did so much trial and error with this stupid game. Because I'm really stupid. But yeah, anyway. Miss May. What you said just now was quite revealing. <laughs> it's with all the references. Jeez. Hard evidence and stuff. Revealing? Ew, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Naughty Mr. Lawyer. You just said that the statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Er Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Rabble, 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 rabble. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Ooh. Object. The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. Well, you you will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. Oh, fuck off. Yeah. Well, questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. The one case I've had before this. Well, only once. <laughs> Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Whew! That was close. If he stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? Jesus. What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That's... Because I heard it? Yes! I heard it say the time! No. So, you've been to the law offices of Faye and Co.? No! Hey! I didn't say that! Why would I go there? I heard from my hotel room! Hee <laughs> hee! The law offices of Faye & Co, where the murder took place, are very close to the hotel. 
She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? Not even close. No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... It couldn't have wrong because I think the stuff was taken out, right? Your Honor, members of the court. It is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. And it's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. Bet you didn't know that, Edgeworth, you dick. How could you possibly... Just have a look, as soon as you can. Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness... They're twitchy. <laughs> is a big fat liar. Fat! <laughs> well, Miss May. Oh no. Tisk tisk. Hmm. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Ugh. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Ha ha ha. Ho ho, impossible, of course. I have proof. What? <laughs> gotcha. Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... The call log, right? Yeah. Take that! Take, that! Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. That's what I said, Judge. Woohoo! You have a girly phone! Wait, wait! This isn't my phone! Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Whoa! Order! Order! The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention! Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? The good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. My heart goes out to you, Edgeworth. Not. Let's hear the conversation. Do you just want me to hold on to the finger for you then? If you could. Ah, uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Your Honor, I think this recording makes it clear that the clockwork was already gone. And this was recorded in the morning before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Me, me, me? Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? <laughs> 